Senator Kunish, we began this evening, you uh, talked a little bit about education. I'd like to talk a little bit about higher education and how that fared in this session. Um, the governor has already uh, hinted at or suggested that, um, well, anyway, let, let, let me just give you the floor to talk a little bit about what transpired in higher education. We do have this question of what we're going to do with the uh, um, university hospital and uh, some of these questions, but uh, that maybe is more a healthcare question than, than higher ed. Let's let's talk about higher ed to start with. Senator Kunish, your thoughts on that? Well, um, we know that uh, many of our, um, our post uh, high school students have been has struggled uh, to to be able to afford school, and it's not just that tuition, but it's the cost of going to school. Feed, you know, the feeding those kids, um, the books, and all of those those sort of things. So um, we know that uh, when we start to invest in th that level of education, those are the kids that are going to stay, whether they come from out of state or they're in state. If they have a good college experience, they're going to stay here and do the work uh, that we're going to need them to do. So uh, the $4 billion plus higher ed bill that was passed this, uh, this session that includes funding for free public college for students from uh, uh, with who, who students that are coming from families that make less than $80,000 per year, I believe is going to make a big difference uh, as we go forward. Um, the cost has just been, uh, you know, the, the loans that kids have had to take in order to complete their education has been just a burden. And so um, within the K-12 education, we have loan forgiveness. Um, and it's just really important that, um, that as we look forward, um, especially with the University of Minnesota and our land grant colleges that we are continuing to uh, invest in those those areas. Um, and I'm just really proud um, that we were able to do that in, in a level that uh, that we were. And so um, very proud of, of the work that we did for higher ed. Senator, just to follow up on that, your your legislative colleague, Gene Pulowski, uh been on our program not only this time, but many times in previous years. And he's expressed concern about declining enrollments uh, and declining applications at the higher education level. Um, any thoughts on that as it relates to action taken this uh, session? Well, I would imagine that um, we will see, and I would hope that we would see an increase in enrollment across the across the state uh, are especially those low income families and our BIPOC communities that have found the cost of going to university so prohibitive that um, they haven't had that opportunity to get the higher learning, the skills that um, are going to allow them to increase their income and um, contribute towards the good of Minnesota whether through jobs, through their experience, their expertise, and their taxes. And um, I, I think we will see just a really positive side effect of this uh, tuition-free college for those that need it the most. Senator Duckworth, higher education. Well, I think higher education is one of the best examples of, of people actually sitting around their kitchen, kitchen table and looking at their home budget. Uh, was kind of referenced that the state of Minnesota was maybe you know looking at our, our budget uh, as if we were a homeowner. And I think the the one advantage that the state has that Minnesotans don't have is Minnesotans can't just raise taxes and reach into the pockets of their neighbors to pay for all the good ideas and programs that they want to do. That's the biggest difference. Um, and a surplus should never be looked at as a bonus by any means. This is not a a bonus that the state has over collected taxpayer dollars and, and removed it from them and their ability to use it on their families or loved ones and their futures. And I think when we look at this uh, program in particular, as it relates to higher education and college, uh, you've got a lot of Minnesotans out there saying, I would love the chance and the opportunity to save and pay for my child's higher education before the state requires me and forces me to pay for that of others. And when you look at what this program is gonna do long run is, um, it, sure, it, it may subsidize higher education for some, and, you know, I think many could argue that's a good thing, but it's going to come at a cost to tuition overall 
being raised on everyone else. That's the most significant issue at public institutions anyway. We had a state grant program we could have chosen to fund instead, which would have benefited a lot more students and families and institutions and colleges all across the state rather than being very segmented. I think what you're going to see happen is um, you're going to see a lot of colleges or public institutions continue to raise their tuition because we didn't actually go about trying to solve the problem, which was how do we help these institutions continue to drive tuition rates down and make it more affordable for folks. That's part of the enrollment issue. And if we know that this is going to continue to increase the costs of tuition, well, we're of course, potentially going to have an impact on enrollment as well. So um, I think that's the holistic picture we have to be mindful of when it comes to higher education here in the state of Minnesota and why kids and families are or are not choosing to pursue it. Representative Long, higher education. Thank you. Well, I think uh, Senator Duckworth has it backwards. I think that we have seen the higher education burden shift dramatically towards putting the cost of higher education on students. 20 years ago, uh, the way that we paid for higher education was about 70% state, about 30% students, and that has flipped. Now we're putting 70% of the cost of higher education on our students. And that means that a lot of families can't afford to go to college, which is why you're seeing uh, on the enrollment declines that we're seeing in this state. That has huge impacts on our overall economy. We're seeing jobs go unfilled because folks don't have the skills that they need. And uh, our higher education is one of the main ways that they can get those skills. We're also seeing students take on huge amounts of debt and delaying starting families, delaying buying homes, delaying all of the things that help our economy be productive. Uh, because they're not able to get a good, affordable higher education. And this budget makes a really important step in that direction. We are hold, freezing tuition for all Minnesota state schools for the next two years in this. And we are, as Senator Kunesh mentioned, paying for uh, the tuition for families that make under $80,000 a year. That is something that red states and blue states do across the country. It's a bipartisan approach, and it is hugely successful around the country to help students get access to that good higher education, which can be life-changing and uh, launch them into new careers. Um, we've heard uh, from uh, our colleagues on this program that folks are leaving the state, but they haven't told you why they're leaving the state. It's not wealthy people because of taxation, it's young people. The folks in their 20s are the ones who are leaving the state when you look at the actual data, and they're leaving the state because they're going to college in other states and they're staying. They aren't able to afford college here and they don't see uh, our state being affordable. So the investments that we're making in higher education and helping uh, folks who want to start families here, afford childcare, afford housing, that's what's going to make our economy successful and keep people in our state. Representative Igo, higher education. <laughs> Yeah, you know, when I kind of look at large questions like this, I like to break it down like it's an equation uh, and think about how we got to this spot. And I think, you know, the state of Minnesota does have uh, decreasing enrollments. Um, you know, our flagship university, the University of Minnesota, has a decreasing, declining enrollment. Um, one thing that hasn't been mentioned yet, so I won't try to repeat others, is uh, U of M campus has a crime problem. Um, if parents and kids uh, don't feel safe going to a university, they're not going to enroll there. And then they're going to go do exactly to Representative Long's point. They're going to go to another state, get educated, and realize, wow, I'm a lot safer here, and the state doesn't take as much, much uh, as much as my money. Uh, so that's a huge problem. And then I also think the 80k uh, amount, uh, I think, is going to cause a lot of issues too, because you know we talked about wanting to keep uh, people in the workforce uh, because of childcare. On that equation, we were working on. Let's apply it to this. Now, if uh, two parents are at home. Um, and they're making just a little over 80K when, they're, when their uh, kids are reaching college age, well, wouldn't it be the knowledge of them to leave one of them to leave the workforce and all of a sudden they could get free education for their student? So then we're decreasing wealth, we're decreasing our workforce, um, and I think that was part of the equation that we didn't talk about. Um, so, and, and finally, again, if people had more money, uh, and they weren't being taxed as much, they'd be able to set aside for their for their children or children uh, would be able to work through school and save money to work themselves through school because with more enrollment, tuition comes down. So all of these things are interconnected. Uh, and I think that's worth mentioning.